So first question I have for you, uh, what is, what's the software development process currently like for local governments? I mean, is, there, is everybody reinventing the wheel? Is there any sharing going on? Um, it's a great question. There's some sharing going on, but it's very, very limited. Um, and, and a lot of it really depends on what we're talking about. Uh, this is a conversation actually that I enter into many, many different times uh, a week, a month, a day, even sure. with fellow uh, CIOs, both on the state uh, and local and even the federal level. Um, and, and these examples run the gamut from big to small. So just you know, little ones like um, we've developed over the course of many years our geocoder, which takes any address input and converts it to a real physical location. Mm -hmm. But every city out there that does anything with GIS has exactly the same mm -hmm. thing. And some of them have bought them and some of them have developed their own. Um, and that's the small end. On the big end, uh, and this is something that Steve Fletcher, who's the president of Massey on the CIO of Utah, has been talking a lot about lately. Every state has to develop an MMIS system, Medicaid Management Information System. Mm -hmm. And um, these systems end up costing between, say, 50 and $120 million a pop. Wow. And 56 states need them, right? Right. And so 56 states have something in place, but, you know, these things have to be replaced and revamped. And, you know, as laws change, they have to be, you know, reconfigured and, and all this stuff. And um, it would make a lot of sense and save a lot of money if we could figure out a way to create a single system that everybody could share and then tweak as they need to tweak in order to make something work. So there's, I mean, this is a, you know, a multi-billion dollar problem mm. if we could solve it. So how can open source help local governments? Is it purely a cost savings thing or are there other aspects to it that could benefit local? It's, it's an interesting question. Um, so I actually, I mean, cost savings is definitely one element of it, but I actually don't think the cost savings of open source is the sort of uh, the panacea that everybody thinks it is. Mm -hmm. It's true that there's no upfront licensing cost, but at the same time, there is um, definitely cost in terms of figuring out the appropriate implementation strategy, uh, making sure you have the people with the right skills on staff to be able to maintain and manage a system. Um, you need to put a lot of thought into how you actually implement it. So there are costs involved. Um, I would say that um, if I had to guess, the cost savings of an open source implementation as compared to a proprietary solution would probably be 60 to 80 percent of the cost of a full proprietary solution. So there are cost savings. On the other hand, there are significant benefits to open source in the fact that you have a much, much wider pool uh, from which to draw of people who are interested in solving problems. Mm -hmm. And you can actually get people to help you um, build things that would not normally be involved in that process. Mm -hmm. uh, in a weird sort of way, that's actually taking this concept of government openness and transparency and making it even more open and transparent. We're saying, look, here are our business processes. Here are the things that we need to accomplish with this tool or with this solution. Help us accomplish this, right? So we're going to you know, sort of open the kimono, as it were, for everything mm -hmm. so that you can help us fix these problems. Sort of dovetailing with that, how can governments best harness enthusiasm from non-government workers. I, I'm assuming we need more than app contests, right? <laughs> yeah, I, um, I think app contests are, a, a, and especially the ones that DC did a couple of years ago, um, were a phenomenal way of really kicking this whole thing off and, mm -hmm. and, and really taking advantage of the fact that there is citizen interest in helping governments do things. Um, but there's more to it than that, mm. right? Um, you know, people are, you know, financial rewards are definitely one motivator, but I think a bigger motivator is creating something that will really help you and your fellow citizens and the residents of, a, of, a, of an area, visitors, tourists, whatever, actually do things in a new and different and exciting way, mm -hmm. right? A better way, make things more efficient. Um, so our Code for America project, actually, I don't know if you've heard much about this, um, I think is one interesting thing. We've been talking a little bit about it today. Um, we're calling it Civic Commons. The general idea is that we're going to create a non-jurisdictional organization that really provides the framework and the foundation for um, creating the long-term goal, which is the civic stack of software. Mm -hmm. um, the, a good analogy is, is the Linux kernel. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when Linus came along and, and, and decided that he was going to write this thing and solicited input, he did and basically brought all of those little projects out there that existed separately and brought it all under one mm -hmm. sort of roof, if you will. Mm -hmm. And that's the idea here. If we can create a foundation that makes it easy for governments to adopt this open source stack, right? And everything that goes along with that, legal, marketing, collateral, case studies, mm, right. uh, business cases, you know, you, you name it. And then the support organizations form up around that so that when I have a problem with something, you know, if something crashes, I can pick up the phone and I know who to call, mm -hmm. right? Then we've got a winner. 
And right. I think this is the thing that we can leverage to actually generate a lot of this enthusiasm because it's not just a one jurisdiction thing at this point, at that point, right? Mm -hmm. Then it becomes a world thing, a sure. global thing. So last question I had for you, it's yeah. kind of an odd one. Do you think that Gov 2.0 is the right term? I mean, do we need, do we need something else? Yeah, I actually think maybe we do. Um, that's an interesting question. Um, I think Gov, Gov 2.0, the, the term 2.0 anything these days serves a purpose, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it sort of symbolizes collaboration, sharing, mm -hmm. um, that kind of thing. And I think, um, I think we've kind of we've kind of played that out a little bit. Um, I think a new term, um, you know, people have tossed around we Gov. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard know. that recently. Um, I think a new term is probably appropriate. I don't know what that term is <laughs> um, because I think there's a lot of stigma to the 2.0 concept. Sure, sure. Um, but um, you know, if you hear anything interesting, I'm, I'm definitely all sure. Ears. If same, I think of same. Anything interesting, Please, I'll let you know. yes. Well, great. Thank you very much for joining. No us No problem. Today. Thank really you very much. It. I appreciate it.